I have begun the recording. You may speak now. You're listening to That Gets My Goat on the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. I think for the next episode that we record, uh-huh. you know, one of the hardest things is to come up with the post name introduction quote and I, I i know for you that's easy but for me it's really difficult dude it takes me forever oh okay i've actually like quizzed people at work what we should do i want something where it says like we're stupid what's the movie quote you can think of oh that's that cool. one where i did the princess bride one where he says you warthog faced buffoon that was actually a suggestion from someone else oh, that's because cool. i i swear it feels like we've used everything ever and anytime I go to use one, I think, oh, I better check with Rish because I think we may have used this already. But if we've set a precedent now, so we can't just not have them, <laughs> right? Well, we just need to have Optimus, Optimus Prime, Prime come and tell us not to, ah, and then we're, we're free. I don't think the moratorium has been declared quite yet. Yeah, um, not yet. But but there's this movie with Pierce Brosnan called Taffin. Okay. Uh, I've never seen it. It's like a, a, a movie that he made right around the Remington Steel days. And uh, Allison Duty plays his girlfriend, and she has some issue with him. And she's like, "You need to stop telling me what you know what's going on in your life." And he's like, "It's none of your concern, woman." Oh, and he says it really calmly. He's like, "It's none of your concern, woman." And then she says, "Well, as long as I'm living under this roof, it is my concern." And then he snaps and screams, "Well, maybe you shouldn't be living here." It's so out of nowhere over the top that I'm gonna have I think to... I've seen that before actually that's... And I, I wanted to use it for our next episode but so you still haven't remembered that one that we mentioned when we were at the They Might Be Giants concert the one on the way out the door where we said oh yeah we should say this and then we could each say it again and again what goes on in this town is none of your business as long as I'm living here it is then maybe you shouldn't be living here it's just so Unnecessary. <laughs> anyway, I just thought, okay, if we can find something that matches that. <laughs> Maybe I, I, underst- I oversold it. The worst movie mistake ever. It looks like it's from Star oh, Wars. do not F those guys. Look. <laughs> Way more. Lo- What's the big mistake? That armor's too strong for blasters, and then they blow up a, an attic when it falls over. That armor's too strong for blasters. It's not a mistake. Your parents not having an abortion, sir, was the mistake. Said more. That's the worst movie mistake ever. I can hear that guy screaming in hell. I'm going to be waiting for him. Wait, Anyhow. that's that's a pretty bad mistake because you can't hear him screaming in hell if you're not there yet and then also be waiting for him when he gets there. <laughs> but, but maybe he's screaming in like the room next to before he's brought before me. You said you could hear him screaming in hell now. He said, I can hear him screaming in hell. Now, I can't wait to hear him, or I will hear him. Okay. You found a hole in my life. That's right. Person. Worst comment mistake ever by Rish Outfield. Worst insult mistake ever. Yes. <laughs> Need I say more? Luckily, we've recorded our final episode of That Gets My Goat. <laughs> uh, speaking of That Gets My Goat, welcome to That Gets My Goat. Hey, yeah, Welcome. How long have you been here, anyways? Were you just standing there listening at the door? So rude. What I do in the privacy of my own pants. Well, uh, maybe you shouldn't be living here! Nice. But, uh, I am Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Hanklevich. And uh, it's been a little while since we recorded anything, frankly. <laughs> but that gets my goat, I think, went on a little bit longer than the actual episodes. We had a big gap in the episodes. But uh, luckily, That Gets My Goat is here to ease your pain. Yes, because everyone's in pain when there's no episode. Or more like they don't even know the difference. Right. I mean, if we made money from the show, we would feel the pain of there not being any episodes. It's like, oh, shoot, I can't buy any more blow. But uh, because we don't, it's, it's, it's no different. It's like a, a weekend when you're unemployed. <laughs> So there, there was something I wanted to talk about today. Uh, this may be another one of those angry rants. Ooh. Uh, is that okay? I don't care. I love angry rants. Well, good, good. And maybe it won't be. Sometimes I prepare people by saying, oh, this is going to be an offensive episode. I'm going to shriek the C word. 
And then I forget to do it. So, <laughs> you know. Instead, uh, you just say it with a uh, calm demeanor, and it's just not as offensive that way. I don't think there's anything wrong with striking a woman. Back in the box, fake Sean Connery. <laughs> the, the movie Thor we both saw together it was a, a big hit this summer. It was actually the, the most successful of the four comic book movies that came out. Uh-huh. And they announced a release date for the sequel. They announced a sequel and they announced the director for the sequel. And the director was a woman. What? Huh? Yeah, it's uh, the woman that directed Monster, that movie that Charlize Theron won Best Actress for. Oh, okay. She had pretty much only done small films or, or independent films. I believe her name is Nancy Keys, and I'll feel like a horse's patoot if that's not her name, even though I just said that. On three, everybody pointed Rish and laughed. It's okay. I was way wrong. <laughs> but I, I did get the gender right. Yeah, that's really close, though. It was actually Alicia Keys. <laughs> ah. Uh, no, actually, her name was Patty Jenkins. And, you know, there, there was a lot of... I don't know, interest or buzz or, or the, but curiosity about what she would bring to it because she's from this independent film uh-huh. world. And I don't know if we talked about it when we did that that gets in my goot about Thor, uh, about Kenneth Branagh being the director and maybe his Shakespearean influences or background showing up in the movie. Shoot, I hate to go off on a tangent. But I'm going to. You don't hate to go off on a tangent. Uh, uh, my friend Jeff got the Blu-ray of Thor, and we were watching this making of thing, and it was all about Brana as a director of the movie. And you, you remember that speech that Odin gives Thor right before he banishes him, where he's like, "You are a spoiled, petulant child, you know, and you've brought our country, our, our world, close to the uh-huh. brink of war." They showed him d- them doing that scene a couple of times, and then Brana goes over to Anthony Hopkins and whispers in his ear, he's broken your heart. And they took a step back and said, action. And Anthony Hopkins does the exact same lines, and he's like, you are a spoiled, you know, stupid boy, and you have brought this nation to the brink of war or whatever. And holy cow, like people were crying, <laughs> you know, because he does the whole speech, right? And then they say cut and people are like, oh, oh my gosh. And he's like, what did he tell you to say? And I was just like, wow, that's what a director is supposed to do. That's so cool. And then he sort of whispered it instead of just shouting, okay, try it again, Tony, uh, that he's broken your heart, you know? I just, that was really, really neat. And it made me respect Brana as a, as a director more, and they didn't use that take. They used more of an angry, mm-hmm. you know, I'm disgusted with you kind of take. But, you know, like Hopkins' eyes, you know, like filled with tears when he said this thing. And it's just a great, great actor. And maybe that's what an actor slash director brings to it. You know, somebody who has had experience of doing things different ways. And this worked for me once or maybe. I, I think famously, Alfred Hitchcock used to hate when actors would ask him what their motivation is and he would say a paycheck. <laughs> oh, but, uh, you know, there's certain actors, uh, certain directors like that, like George Lucas that are just terrible with actors, you know, uh-huh. they're technical directors. They care about how things look or, or in Lucas's case, I guess the toys and the special effects and all that. <laughs> but, you know, somebody that gets in there that says that it's all about the characters is something that I can really get behind. Because at the end of the day, almost all special effects are going to one day be dated. Right. You know, how amazing King Kong might have been in 1933. It's quaint now. It's still a good movie, but it's nobody is ever going to believe that that's a real creature, right? Right. Even uh, Wizard of Oz probably has a couple of bad special effects. And I don't know. I haven't watched it in 20 years. But the characters and the songs and, and, and the performances, you know, and... and the, the love, friendship, or whatever you call it between those characters in Wizard of Oz is what you remember and what makes it a classic even today. Anyhow, uh, just the, that somebody would say, we're going to focus on these characters and their relationships and the, and the drama of, of what's happening in their lives over the spectacle. I mean, like, sure, there's going to be explosions and there's going to be special effects and CG monsters and all that, but that's for the special effects department to worry about. Let's us focus on feeling 
and getting the most out of these words that we can. Um, and that's the kind of director that you want. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if I should cut that out. Is that the end of your tangent? That was my tangent, yes. <clears throat> but uh, with Branna as the director, you know, we didn't know what he would bring as a uh, an action movie dire director, but it was a good choice. I mean, that yeah. was something that was really interesting. And then Marvel wanted a sequel two years later, and Branna said that, you know, he... Wasn't up for that. He wasn't willing to, yeah, to commit to that time frame. And so he stepped out and they announced Patty Jenkins, Nancy Jenkins, Nancy Loomis, Nancy Travis, Nancy... Patty Jenkins. They announced Patty Jenkins to direct it. And I thought that that was very interesting. And, and what would uh, somebody with her background of, of these little tiny movies do? And then also a woman, because we haven't had a woman... Do these? I mean, we had Catherine Bigelow win Best Director for The Hurt Locker, you know, an action movie or at least a, a guy movie. movie. And that was kind of a, a landmark in a way. You know, it was like, wow. And so to see a woman direct a movie like this would have been an interesting experiment. And maybe that sounds cynical. I don't mean and it just the results would have been unknown. Yeah, to me. It would have been interesting to find out about, though. Um, and I'm speaking about it in the past tense because very, very recently when we were recording this, just yesterday, she dropped out of the project and they cited creative differences. So I, I don't know what that she means. She wanted there to be characters and they wanted there to be explosions and more destroyers that go <laughs> and blast things with their face. Gosh, I hope not. But that's a very possible reason. It's possible that it's just too much work and too much to commit to and too much money and all that stuff. Uh, when X-Men 3 was being made and Brian Singer stepped out of that, they hired Michael Vaughn, Matthew Vaughn, to direct that. And he stepped out and said it was just, you know, not enough time and too much expected of him. And he was from that similar background of small British films, gangster films and all that. Mm -hmm. But then he stepped up. And did X-Men First Class and, and did a fine job on that. So it makes you wonder what he would have done for X-Men 3. Good stuff, I would imagine. But just, you know, sometimes these movies, when they've got a release date, before there's even a script, the pressure has got to be so, so, so great. You know, a start date and they haven't finished the script. And what if they finish the script two days before it's time to start, but the script's not good or the script's not ready and you're forced to do it because there's millions and millions of dollars and tons of people and crew members and board members that are all saying, you know, you have to do this. I can totally understand somebody saying, I don't want that crap. I don't want that over right. my head. And to have somebody like Joss Whedon, who's used to television, you know, making something in seven days or eight days or five days or three days for Dr. Horrible's case. They present to him an infinite amount of money and what must seem like an infinite amount of time. You know, like, we'll give you eight months to make this movie. And it, that must feel like I won the lottery. That's awesome. Right. Um, and, and, you know, there's still a lot of question of how Whedon's Avengers is going to be. I hope that it's a fantastically successful movie, but more importantly, I hope that it's really good. Yeah, I think uh, he should be all right. I mean, he did do Serenity himself, right? He did. And it looked fine. The action stuff and all that was fine. So I think... Uh, but well, Serenity really hurt his career because it didn't make its money back. True, but I don't think that was his fault per se. You know, it was... They expected it to do more than it probably could have. Whereas Avengers is... I mean, it's, it's a, a sequel to 10 different things. So, you know... There's going to be a lot of people, I think, that would be interested in seeing it. So I think it's got a much more proven, wide audience and so forth. But what if the studio is saying, what if Disney is saying Thor made, you know, $200 million and Captain America made $200 million. So Avengers has to make $400 million. Well, if that, that's the case, then they're stupid and things will go bad. But I mean, it's possible that it might, but you can't expect it to break the records and stuff like that just because it's the sequel to two movies you know it's not like a completely different audience went to captain america than went to thor and both of those will come together most of those 
people were the same people that saw the one and the other because it's repeals to that you know group of folks so well and we'll see i mean avengers is not far off really yeah it's this summer now just a few months away and as as we've gotten older months become shorter and shorter years become shorter and shorter a decade is short now uh, at least for me yeah strange that so Patty Jenkins has stepped down, and who knows, by the time this episode airs, there will probably be another director announced, because it's already got a start date, and it's got, it's got a release date. So, you know, they have to speed these things along. They can't just let it simmer. And yeah, it's kind of a shame that Joss can't do them all. <laughs> <laughs> Although we'll see. We'll see if Avengers is, is, is as great as I'm hoping it is. If it isn't, then I'll be like, whoops. I'll I'll find someone else to blame, I'm sure. <laughs> it was Natasha. She said, she said she'd, she'd be, be here. here. Why would she do this? Why would she? Mouser Man? Here? <sighs> Anyhow, I saw a, a comment about that, about Patty Jenkins stepping down yesterday, that vexed me. It, sort of, it upset me because, oh, basically, the comment was, uh, you know, oh, I had such high hopes for this film, there being a woman at the helm. But now I'm sure that they'll go the stereotypical route and hire a man to do a stereotypical sexist film. And that really bothered me because we saw Thor. Was Thor sexist? I mean, if anything, the sex object was Thor and the girl (laughs) was the smart bookish relatable character. I I, I don't know. It just it was so weird. And, And I've heard this for years about comic books being misogynist and Hollywood being sexist and things like that. But comic books are for boys. They're teen boy escapist fantasies, and they always have been. I don't understand that. If somebody made a movie about Barbie or Barbie dolls, would you say it's sexist to say that they're for girls? That's what they're for. That's, it's just obvious. That's, that's who they were intended for. Why do we want to try and attract boys to Barbie dolls or to a Barbie movie? It's like, oh, shoot. No boys are going to want to go see this Barbie movie. What are we going to do? We need to take Barbie out of the title. Then they'll go see it. Let's call it Tangled. We'll call it Dream House instead of Barbie's Dream House. <laughs> we'll call it Tangled. That's good. Can you say we're going to make the best Barbie movie for girls that we can? Or... Better yet, the best, cheapest Barbie movie for girls we can <laughs> so that you guarantee to recoup your investment. And and yeah, I, I am not a girl, so I don't know how important this is. But, you know, a movie like Expendables or something like that would offer very little for a female viewer, I would think. But it did really, really well financially. Uh, is the studio that did Expendables just kicking themselves that they didn't draw more women in? I don't know. That's a rhetorical question. We can't know unless you get the head of Sony on the phone or whoever made it. It's just, it's funny to me that that, that was somebody's issue. And you know, maybe not everybody feels that way. But I've heard it a lot that women are mistreated in comic books or that, you know, this, this, there's this meme. And it's an internet meme, like they all are, called Women in Refrigerators. And it's about how bad comic books are how sexist and misogynist comic books are because the girlfriend always gets kidnapped or the girlfriend gets killed or in one case got stuffed in a refrigerator or thrown off the brooklyn bridge or whatever it might be i've i've never understood that i've never understood that mentality because the vast majority of these heroes are men and you can't kill batman you can't kill spider-man But you can kill a supporting character. You can kill the the woman he loves and continue a Spider-Man title. And of course, it's going to tear Spider-Man apart, but you still have a book the next month. Is that sexist? Is that misogynist? Is that that hateful toward women? If if anything, it's it's showing that he has love for women. The the Gwen Stacy story, someday I'm going to tell it on the air, is just such a powerful, immensely sad tragic thing that happens in his life is there some woman out there that reads that and says aha the green goblin killed a woman just like all men would like to do you know i just i i don't i don't know i don't understand 
Now I will let you talk. Have you seen those Dr. Pepper commercials for their new Dr. Pepper soda that's come out? I have not. It's, I think it's called like Dr. Pepper 10 or something like that. It's like an action movie. And it shows this guy like running through the forest with like a laser gun and like a knife in his hand or something like that. And he's like, yeah, this is our movie. You girls aren't watching this movie or something like that. He's like, see this? I'm shooting a laser and he's, I'm killing an alien or whatever. And he's like, this is our movie. And Dr. Pepper 10 is our soda. It's for men or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's just, Wait, I guess. Is, is it a joke? No. Is Dr. Pepper 10 really for men? It's done in a funny way, but I think the idea, it's one of those same kind of things where they assume that diet sodas are what women drink or maybe the vast majority. I don't know if they have like data or polls or something like that that they've done to know this. And so they're now like, okay, let's try and get that target audience that we're missing. And so they've decided to put 10 calories in it instead of just one or zero or whatever. And uh, then a man will drink it because there's 10 calories. Uh, it's got a sprinkle of sugar. I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> but yeah, they're trying to bring in that underserved niche, that one that we really wanted a diet soda of our own. That's funny. See, because I thought where you were going with that is immediately following that, there's like a beach and a sunset and a handsome guy on a horse and a girl in a, with a flowing dress that walks. And she looks at the camera and says, this is our movie and this is our drink, Dr. Pepper 10 it's for women only or whatever you know they would have like half and half in every commercial that's where I thought you were going because that seemed like a really clever marketing campaign you know it's like you got your peanut butter in my chocolate you know you got your phallic symbol in my orifice <laughs> and I just I, I, I hoped that that's where they were going but it sounds like they're, they're funny commercials I don't know they're they're not incredibly funny they're they're all right but uh, I mean they're no like don't be silly, Adrian Peterson kind of <laughs> commercials or something like that. But I, I, they just came to mind because you were talking about the whole got to make the Barbie movie for boys now or something, trying to get every single bit. So now we've got diet sodas that we must push on men because, you know. Because there's an untapped are, market out yeah, there, I guess, or a perceived Untapped There's market. a great deal of people out there that haven't developed anorexia yet because we haven't made them feel bad enough about They're men right. being fat. And, you know, we need to really pound on that for a while because we've already pounded the women into submission with the whole anorexia thing. They've all given in and stopped eating long ago. Ooh. So <laughs> I don't know. It's just, It seems kind of dumb to me. And I like Dr. Pepper a lot. I'm a sort of a fan as it were, but I don't think I'll ever try it myself. So I guess it's not going to work on one man, even though it's my movie. Well, I, if there was a, a diet soda that didn't have that really nasty chemical aftertaste yeah, that, that tells you you just thing. tasted something diet, I would probably be fine with it. I remember when I was really weight conscious, I filled my cup up uh, with a diet Pepsi one time. Because it was like, okay, this is the solution. You know, got got to cut out these drinks, and it was awful. It was uh, it was like drinking a soda where the mixture is off, the machine is out, <laughs> right? And and you're just like, oh, hey, sir, you need to change this tank. It, it's just like it's spewing cockroaches out of the nozzle. <laughs> yeah, it's totally like that. Yeah, and I had a girlfriend once who would drink diet Pepsi or coke i can't remember which but she would drink whatever the, whichever the sexy one is yeah she would drink that all the time and i was just like i i can't and she's like no you'll get used to it and then once you get used to it then if you drink like a regular soda you'd be like oh God, this is way too sweet it's oh it's awful i can't imagine and that i guess you just gotta like force yourself and you know of course it would probably be better to just force yourself to get used to drinking water and eating vegetables, or I don't know, you know, making actual healthy choices instead of a bad choice in a different way. Because no, you know, I I say no. <laughs> the line must be drawn here. But uh, I know further. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so, well, this is leading me to the second half of my conversation. So this is a good place to stop. Let's stop right here, and then I will come back next week. I can't wait to see the angry comments on this, but. Maybe next week we will address those concerns or those issues. So, uh, good night. Good night. That Gets My Goat is published under a Creative Commons 
attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. That gets my goat, really? We will do, do what's the word? Where you assuage somebody or their 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 concerns? Where you where you like a like a uh, make, resolve the concerns? I guess I, there's there's a word for you know the D? you know it's like a a politician has you know it's like he calls a press Deflect? conference. No, no, and and he's like, I understand. I know what everybody's talking about 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 me, and I'm here to address. Okay, I will just say. Uh, Maybe you shouldn't be living here!